NFL stadiums vary in how they are funded. Usually, there is a balance of public and private money involved. Some are more favorable to one side than another. However, there is only one stadium currently in the NFL that was 100% publicly funded. This is Raymond James Stadium, a lesson in stadium deals. The story of Raymond James Stadium begins in 1995 when the Buccaneers were sold to Malcolm Glazer for $192 million. Around this time, Glazer declared that the existing stadium, Tampa Stadium, also known as the Big Sombrero, was not adequate for NFL football any longer. As a result, the planning process began towards funding such a venture, with the city and county coming up with the initial plans. First, a more visitor-oriented funding plan was proposed, with funding coming from fees on tickets, parking, and taxes on car rentals. This was not acceptable in the view of ownership, and it was countered that a more broad, non-stadium-focused source of funding be found. With this disagreement, there was some question over the future of the Buccaneers in Tampa. Glazer then threatened to move the team, and with the recent moves of the LA Rams, Raiders, and the Cleveland Browns, he had leverage. With these three recent relocations due to stadium issues, the threat of relocation seemed less and less like an empty one than ever before. The Brown situation posed a particularly unique threat as the NFL had promised Cleveland a team as part of a legal settlement for breach of their stadium lease. The plan was for the Browns to be either an expansion team or a move team, and though they weren't the only city being considered by ownership, it seemed that the Buccaneers could more and more likely become the Browns. With 1996 came a vote on a plan to fund a new stadium in Tampa. This sales tax funded plan would be for a half percent in the county and would pass by a narrow 6% margin. As part of an effort to sell the plan to voters, Glazer promised to pay for half of the new stadium if fans bought enough long-term season ticket plans. The benchmark he set was never met though, and taxpayers were on the hook for 100% of the cost of the stadium. While the tax measure passed, it was one of the most one-sided, league, and owner-friendly deals ever, as neither the league or ownership paid for any of it. To put this into perspective, the league average of private funding from 1997 to 2015 was 44%. Tampa got 0%. With the funding secured, the stadium began construction almost immediately after and opened in 1998. While the deal itself to get it built was a bad one, the stadium has hosted three Super Bowls since opening. This has enabled some local economic benefit. The deal isn't as bad as Paul Brown Stadium, which was built a few years later. Though that was 6% privately funded, it can't host Super Bowls and cost more than double what Raymond James cost. And at the very least, Bucks ownership paid for a practice facility, unlike Cincinnati. This aside, the deal was still a bad one, and shows what can happen when timing, circumstances, and ownership aren't on your side. A decent stadium that's hosted big games, Raymond James Stadium's deal will still go down as one of the worst. Thank you for watching.